Hi everybody, Mark here from PondAlgaeSolutions.com and in today's video I, I want to address a specific question that was sent in and I think it's a good one uh, because it it's it's not the first time we've had this asked about ultrasound and using it for algae control. Um, I put together another video that covers some of the most basic questions we've gotten over the years uh, about it, but there was one that I left out that I think I want to go more in depth with here. And it won't take long, but I think it's important to cover it. So a lot of people will learn about ultrasound for algae control and immediately be intrigued by it. It sounds like a, a great silver bullet one-stop shop thing. Is this going to be the solution to my algae problems? And Oftentimes it can help quite a lot, sometimes completely, um, but is it the first thing I consider in every single situation? Um, let's say someone has an acre pond or two acre pond and they've got an algae problem. Is it the first thing I would consider? No, I would have to be honest and say no. I think that ultrasound is a very specific tool that is designed to kill algae. Um, that's what it does. It, it can help uh, in some secondary way to stimulate microbial activity in the pond. It doesn't harm them. It actually seems to stimulate their performance a bit. But beyond that, it's just a tool that's designed for a chronic consistent algae problem. And it is an alternative that many can use, especially on large waters, to help limit or reduce uh, or eliminate chemical applications, algicide applications, and, and save not only costs, but also help kind of holistically assist the pond a little bit in that way. So, um, but is it the first thing I go to? No, it's not. My preferred protocol developed over almost 20 years now of working with ponds in a holistic fashion. I don't use chemicals very much. I don't like to use chemicals, um, and especially algicides with copper prefer not to do that. Uh, it's a last resort thing for us. But my preference is to start first with pond aeration, ideally subsurface aeration, where we're releasing, using a land-based pump and releasing air uh, uh, out of a very fine bubble diffuser. Um, that improves the circulation in the body of water. It also helps to break surface tension at the top where oxygen can come in, be picked up, and then literally circulated throughout the body of water, top to bottom and all around. That alone can help improve things all on its own in many, many cases. Not every case, but in a lot of cases it will improve the pond environment so much that naturally occurring microbes can, uh, can ramp up their work. And these microbes are nature's way of dealing with nutrients, high nutrients in the pond. They are pond cleaners, natural pond cleaners that help break down and assimilate you know, organic muck and compost at the bottom. Uh, they help lower nutrients from this muck and compost or stuff that runs into the pond from surrounding areas that may be nutrified, if you will. And um, these microbes can help balance those nutrients out to the point that algae loses its fuel. Aeration is a key supportive mechanism for these microbes that are naturally occurring in a pond. So I start with aeration, and that helps a lot of different things. The second thing that I might do if I've had aeration in a pond for 60 days, let's say, and we've worked up to full-time operation, and I'm still not seeing as much improvement as I'd like, I would supplement microbes in there. We all have uh, commercial-grade available microbes. Uh, we have several different kinds at our site at pondalgiesolutions.com, and that's kind of where we founded the work. That was the first product we ever came out with at Pond Algae Solutions, and we've been working with the same product for almost 20 years now. And so it does work, it helps. Uh, I won't claim that any of this is a silver bullet, mind you, please understand that. But for people looking for a holistic way to deal with an algae problem, it's helped a lot of people. And so start with aeration, set that foundation, add in microbes if necessary. Um, where ultrasound comes into play, is possibly the third leg on that stool. 
If I'm still having some issues, I may start to look at ultrasound. I would always pretest the type of algae that I have first. I would do a lab analysis looking under a microscope at what species I have present to cross-correlate that with a database of successful treatments with ultrasound, making sure that the fit was right. That's number one. And then number two, um, I would say that as the body of waters get larger and larger, ultrasound starts to make more and more sense. Sometimes maybe right off the bat because the expense to aerate some of those lakes is quite costly and in some cases almost impossible. They're so large. Uh, and in other cases, you could say that treating with a chemical additive, an algicide, or even biologicals could be cost prohibitive when you know the, the costs get into tens of thousands of dollars per year or more. Uh, that, in my mind, starts to really add up over time. And a device like this that is really meant for large water management, it's, it's suited to that in, in so many respects that it starts to make sense to consider it as a, a frontline uh, treatment to either lower uh, you know, algicide usage or eliminate it altogether. If you can do the latter, you've really won the game. And that's, that's a great thing. And so I don't always use it right off the bat. There are better ways to deal with the algae problem, in my opinion, in smaller bodies of water, you know, uh, ponds and lakes of smaller size. But uh, if they get really large, then ultrasound starts to make more and more sense. And then you want to make sure it's a good fit for your particular situation by looking at the algae species specifically that you have to deal with. Then you can make an educated decision on whether to try it or not and to give it a go. So anyway, I just wanted to cover that today. It's a, it's a pertinent question and a good one. So I appreciate, um, appreciate you sending that in, John. And um, if you have other questions come up, feel free to reach me at pondalgesolutions.com. You can contact us there or leave a comment below on the YouTube video. Happy to help if we can. And until next time, I hope you have a great day wherever you are.